Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcoming back to today's program from beautiful Charleston, South Carolina area. Chris, welcome back to the program. Hey, man. Glad to be back. I don't know how beautiful it is today, though. It looks a little wet out there. Yeah, I think we get the similar weather to y'all because today it's cloudy and raining here in Atlanta. So and over the weekend, my parents were in Charleston visiting my sister. Did you clean my sister's trash cans again? No, I didn't. You did it? No. Are they still just spotless? <laughs> huh. No, because I thought my mom said someone had cleaned their trash cans again. I didn't. Okay, I got to check with her about that. <laughs> That's what she told me. She's like, hey, I think your friend came by and cleaned the trash cans again. I was I on vacation. Know. Yeah, so, I don't know. I don't know either, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm glad somebody cleaned them then. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who cleaned them. I'll have to ask my mom. Maybe, <laughs> maybe she meant... They're, they're still clean from the one time you cleaned them. I don't right. know. Well, how's everything going over there, man? It's crazy. You know, it, listening to you guys talk about the, you know, the spring rush, we're in the summer rush. The hot, stinky trash cans, maggots, flies, all that. So, you know, now we're running wide open in the can cleaning business. And, you know, MSA is, we're just learning a ton about the lawn care business and, and what you guys do and how you guys do it as far as on the operational side of things. So it's been good. Very exciting. Yeah. And for those of you who maybe didn't catch our previous episode, and I know you've been on my friend Naylor's show as well, and I think you've talked to our buddy Jason. So guys are starting to get more familiar with your story, but you actually own a home service-based business called Happy Cans, and you'll go to people's houses the day that their trash is you know, picked up. Yep. And then you'll clean their trash can so the maggots aren't in there, the odors, the just nastiness of trash, and uh, you'll clean that up. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so I have this business, Happy Cans. Just a short recap, I had a problem with all these requests coming in and me having to take time to look up their address and see if I would even be able to service them. There wasn't a tool on the market. I couldn't use a zip code filter, so built this tool called My Service Area that allows myself and, and other users or allows you to build territories or regions on a map and uh, attach it to your website. And if they're in your territory, because they enter in their address, they get through to your request page or free quote, however you label that. Uh, if they're out of territory, it says, hey, sorry, we don't service your address at this time. You know, please leave us your email and we can follow up with you if things change. Yeah, so that's what it does at, at at its core in my two minute explanation of it. Yeah, no, this is high level stuff. So for guys that are just tuning in and hearing your story, you learned to survive in your industry. You have to have high route density. And as you listen to Naylor and myself and others that are championing the message of route density and what I mean by that, guys, I was just out in Arkansas, Chris. There's a neighborhood that Fayark Lawn Care Company works in and i was i, li I listened to that show yeah. yeah i was i was telling eric because i was like dude i'm about to move to arkansas fayetteville arkansas this <laughs> this neighborhood is flat there's no we have the appalachian mountains start you know about 25 miles north of me it can get really mountainy hilly but where i live it's hilly right and when i go to alabama and visit jeremiah jennings those guys it's hilly i don't like hill i mean i like hills to like you know go on, on a walk in the park you know not to have a business this neighborhood chris was flat and they had all these cookie cutter yards. The yards were like identical size. And I said, dude, you could make so much money in this neighborhood. And you, all you have to do is work in this one neighborhood. So I was joking with Eric. I was like, you got some competition, man. I'm moving to town. <laughs> you could just target. I mean, you could take yeah. on, on your website and you could select, here's the neighborhood I want to work in or maybe neighborhoods. And then when someone goes to your website, it can filter through that. And it will show them, oh, you're in our service area or no, you're not. And uh, I know this is high level stuff because a lot of y'all listening to me don't even have a website. So right. <laughs> for those that at least you do have a website, you can get even more of a vetting process so that when you have an inquiry, uh, uh, what do they call it? A website visitor? Right. Come through that you're not wasting their time or your time, but you can pretty quickly determine by them typing in their address if they're in your area. And I'm so glad you mentioned that. So one of the big things that we have learned, you know, the first half of this year is, is that not only MSA, you know, being valuable for saving you time, it's saving your website visitor time. 
Mm -hmm. It's almost like a customer service tool because imagine if you're you're coming to uh, you know a landscaping site, you fill out this form, you take the time to fill out the form, submit it, and then wait for a phone call or an email, only to find out that that company does not service your address, and now you just wasted what 10, 15 minutes or so of your time, and now you got to go back and look for a different uh, service provider. So that, that's something that we have been hearing a lot from our clients. Yeah. And there's some folks that I've been in their office and they'll have like an old school map of their county or, or area. And then they'll take like a marker and highlight the area and, you know, like actually do it manually. But with my service area, can you like actually draw the map? Like how do you determine what your service area is. Cause I think that's a good practice, especially for guys who are just starting out to identify that because most people don't even identify that. And then, you know, cousin Pookie calls and says, Hey, my aunt, you know, <laughs> needs you to come out. Okay. I'll be there. And then the next thing you know, the neighbor comes out and says, Hey, can you do mine while you're here? And you're, you're, you're way outside your service yep. area because you haven't identified it. But if you can identify it, then you can just stick to your boundaries and say, Hey, sorry, Pook, but we don't, you know, we don't go out that far. Yeah. So what we recommend is somebody, you know, look at the map, understand their current, if, if they've been in business for a while, understand the, the neighborhoods and areas that they already service. And so as part of the setup and what we do and, and we help you with this is you create a map, you drop pins and you create a polygon basically on a Google map on the back end of my service area on the map page. You create your region. You can have one region. You can have, you know, as, as many regions as you want. It just depends what level you're on. And you just drop pins, you can shape them and you can get so finite. We've got a lawn care reputation, a reputation lawn care, I think is here in Charleston. He's got nine, eight or nine neighborhoods mm -hmm. that he services and that those are his territories, his regions. And so anybody in one of those neighborhoods, they get through. If they're out of those neighborhoods, it'd say, hey, let's leave us your email address. We'll follow up with you. And one cool thing that we've learned, I mean, I've I've heard about it from you guys, but the the hardscaping and softscaping, people are willing to travel further oh, than yeah. shops because they're big dollar. Of course. And so when we were working with Robert, Robert was like, you know, I do I do landscaping too, and I'm willing to travel to the outskirts of Charleston County and some, you know, John's Island, if you're familiar with this area. I'm I'm willing to travel further. So I would like to get I'd like those inquiries to come through. We actually built this functionality that he has this landscaping map that over overlays on top of everything else. I don't want to get too technical, but if if somebody clicks his landscaping button for an inquiry or request to meet, they mm -hmm. can more than likely they're going to get through because okay. his area is so big. But anybody outside of that area, again, you know, would say, hey, sorry, we don't service your address. Leave us your email. Okay. Well, let's do this, Chris. Let's take a quick moment and hear from today's show sponsors. And then coming up, I want to talk about the practical application of how somebody can integrate this because it's very simple to their website and create their route area and, and get that going so that you know we can get customers that are in the neighborhoods that we want to be working in and not be wasting our time, you know, figuring it out that Sweet Sue lives on the other end of town and, it, and it's just... So it adds up three minutes here, four minutes there, and you multiply that over your lifespan. It's, it's like you've wasted days or beyond just vetting customers. So the technology can handle that for you with my service area. So we're going to hear a quick word from today's show sponsors and coming up, we'll have more with Chris from cloudy, rainy Charleston, South Carolina. <laughs> Alrighty. So talking with Chris from my service area, and he also has his own business called happy cans. And unfortunately, Chris, a lot of guys listening to me right now don't even have websites. I've been really championing this for a while that we should all have a solid website. But uh, the reality is a lot of guys don't and they're working on it and they're they're, get, they're getting that together. But for the folks that do have their website that's you know up and running, how can they, how simple is it to get this route density app or whatever. I don't even know what it's called, a my service area. How do you get yeah. it on your website? Walk us through the technical side of things. With my service area, it's a line of code. And, th and this is something, you know, this has been a kind of a, an experiment with us as far as how do we help onboard new customers of my service area. So we decided that adding a setup fee would help facilitate that. 
When people pay the setup fee, they're serious about their business. They want to get this implemented implemented because we had a free tier and we had to do away with that because we found that people would sign up and they wouldn't take action. Even after, you know, multiple engagements of trying to help them, they just wouldn't take action. So, you know, there's always that um, you ever heard that that saying, you know, you pay, you pay attention. Yeah, I I agree 100 percent. So, so that's what we changed here in the, in the past probably 45, 60 days is that when you sign on for a level, you, you pay a setup fee. And part of that setup fee is helping us get the code. Either we do it for you or we work with your uh, website hosting team or you know management team, whatever the case may be. But get a line of code on that website. If you're using WordPress, we've got a plugin for it. Just activate it put in some codes and you're good to go. And then we help you map out your regions. We help you with the language. We help you identify where you want MSA to be activated. And what I mean by that is, you know, request a free estimate, request service, lawn care, whatever button you would like for MSA to pop up and say, hey, to be mindful of your time, let's see if we service your address first. And so we do that. And then we do some testing, and once you are satisfied and things are looking good, then we, you know, click the little activate button and refresh everything, and then you're good to go. So then, you know, when somebody comes to your website and they click on, you know, get a free estimate or get a quote, MSA pops up, and it starts filtering in those website inquiries for you. That's fantastic. Do you have any testimonials. I know you mentioned this guy in Charleston that's been using it of, of how much time it's saving people from not vetting customers and it just to find out that it's not a match. Not in lawn care yet because the lawn care guys, we had a ton of sign up of lawn care guys, you know, thanks to your show and Naylor as well. What we found out, and this is what kind of, you know, we had our V8 moment, you know, that that commercial with the frying pan over the head is like, Mm -hmm. Hey, these guys will sign up, but they're signing up for the free tier and they're not taking action. And so we need to, you know, we need that. We want to work with the people that really want to save time and become more efficient and create more uh, route density. So that's where we said, we we've got to get rid of the free tier and do this setup. But to answer your question, sorry, I kind of went off there. We don't have anybody yet as far as quotes with the lawn care because you guys have been so slammed. But, you know, one example I use is one of the guy at Spiffy Ben that you saw in Atlanta and you texted me his picture, Michael. In one week, this was this was a while ago. In one week, we saved him one hundred and thirty six dollars in refunds for people that had purchased his service that were out of his service area. Wow. Yeah. Now, so here's where there's a difference between the can cleaning business and the lawn care business. In the can cleaning business, there are businesses out there that you can buy the service directly from the website. I still filter every one of my requests come through and I have to approve it. But like in the lawn care, you have requests come in and they have to be approved as well. So there wouldn't necessarily be a credit card refund benefit. But just imagine if you're out mowing, uh, mowing the, the grass, mowing yards, and you're getting inquiries either by email or phone call, and you have to look up an address to find out if you even service that address. Well, what if you had MSA implemented and you knew that you got an inquiry and you already knew that that was going to be a profitable client because they're in your territory. Like you can service them. So you, you can go home and say, Oh yeah, we know we service that address. You know, here's the quote, what have you, we can get you on the schedule in two weeks from, you know, whatever the case may be. Yeah, no, that's huge. Cause you can definitely be Johnny on the spot and okay, this is in my zone. This is my wheelhouse this is my neighborhood. You call, the lady back real quick and say, absolutely. Get everything signed, sealed and delivered and and ready to go. So I think it's huge. I I wish this was why Hey, I wish I would have learned more about route density earlier in my business because I'm dumbbell junior over here was driving all across Atlanta, which I know Charles, my sister lives in Charleston and South Carolina guys. So I know honestly the traffic around your neck of the woods, depending on the day and the beach traffic and things like that, it can get, super congested where congested where you are in Atlanta it's a headache I was in a Dallas recently that place was I couldn't stand it 
Dallas, Fort Worth and, and, and all the construction and cones and slow traffic. And so, you know, that was another reason why I told Eric, I think I'm moving to Fayetteville, Arkansas, man. I, uh, there was no traffic out there, but even if you don't have traffic, if you can work, I mean, if you can work in this one big cookie cutter neighborhood or two or three cookie cutter neighborhoods and just be inside those neighborhoods all day long, you know, that saves on a lot of windshield time. And and I, I'm a huge fan of route density. And, and this is just like a one, two punch of how you can actually make route density a reality is this by only taking on customers that are in your service area and letting my service area determine that for the customer. And, and it will save you a ton of time. So Exactly. You guys preach, know your numbers and mm-hmm. you've even got courses on it. And this is a huge thing when it comes to know your numbers. I, I don't know if anybody's done this uh, recently, but with because of gas prices, I mean, I'm about oh 80 cents a mile operating cost. And so when I look at that, that's an eye opener. When you start putting dollars to miles, that that really is an eye opener to what kind of money that you're spending to service clients and how far you need to travel. Yeah. I would just I don't I, think of people I don't think enough people do that. Right. Well this is great, Chris, because I think especially newer guys, at least putting those pins down, making that polygon or I didn't pay much attention in geometry class. So I don't even know what Polygon means, but I'm thinking. Well, well, the good the good thing is when, when you when you sign up for my service area, we start off the map for you based on your address. So the square is there. Okay. Then you, you can just click on the edit button. Then that's when you can start editing it. And when you need to add another region, you click a button. You oh wow! Need to add a region, give that region a name, like you know, Sandhurst neighborhood, and you, you draw so out cool. you draw out that map and go to the next one. Yeah, well, Eric Hill, if you're listening to me out in Fayetteville, Arkansas, man, you that neighborhood I was in, I was filming this guy's work, and I was like, this is gold, man. You just select the perimeter of that neighborhood on the My Service Area app, and then maybe two or three other neighborhoods in the area, and boom. Is, that the, young, is that the young guy? He's 21 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He grew up on a farm. He took me out to his family farm, so he learned a work ethic. His dad owns an electrician business, so... He learned business. He learned work ethic, uh, you know, milking the cows and he started his business. I mean, I'm just like, man, 21 years old, this guy's going to be very successful. But even, even just looking at his business for a day, he, they were kind of spread out all over town. I'm just like, dude, this neighborhood right here, like take some door hangers every day or every, you know, once a week and just blitz this neighborhood with door hangers, with Facebook ads. Like I would just work in this neighborhood. I think they, they had like 20 yards in the neighborhood, but I, I would have went crazy. I would have, I would have had a hundred yards in that neighborhood and, Take over, man. I'm probably preaching to the choir to, to some of you, but I'll, I'll tell you a little advertising hack that's worked for me and for other bin cleaners that obviously could work with lawn care. If you find that champion in one of those neighborhoods and have them post on their neighborhood Facebook or was it next door app or whatever, you know, once or twice a year and give them a discount of some sort if they make those posts. Man, that is just anyway. It works in the can cleaning business. It's worked for me multiple times, and I didn't I mean I discounted some cleanings. That's it. That's great. No, that's, absolutely. Well, I really appreciate your time, Chris, and how convenient you've made this for my listeners. So we'll put the link to my service area in today's show notes, and maybe for those of you guys that you know, Chris is learning, I'm learning, y'all are learning. Maybe you went and you got the freebie, free 99 version of my service area and, and just didn't do anything with it. Cause that's, you know, what we do when we get free things, go back in and sign up and, and do the onboarding and get it connected to your website and make your map and just pull the bandaid off quick kind of guy, Chris. So just go through the process, get yep. it, get it on your website the right way. And, and let's get this thing going. And, you know, I know Na- you've been on Naylor's show and, and he's been tramp- uh, championing this message. Have you talked to the folks out there in Columbia, Alex Kirby and Chris Hollis and those guys? I would love to speak with them. Yeah. Their Instagram's trifecta landscaping. Just shoot them a DM and tell them you're my friend. Cause I think they build websites all day long. Yeah. So they- if they knew that, I don't even know if they know this is out there, but you know, they could make this just automatically put it into all the new websites they're making. I think that'd be huge. I know they use nice job and they, they learned about nice job from my show. So, and they're just right up and they're just right up the road too. Well, yeah. Columbia, they live on Lake Murray maybe. Yeah. Or, or is that a, Mur- is that a lake out there? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I mean, there's a couple around there, but yeah, Lake Murray's one of them. Okay. I think the Lake Murray, I, I've been there. I, I stayed at Alex's parents' lake house 
Irma or Irmo. Anyways, right outside of Columbia, South Carolina. So those guys, uh, I would definitely reach out to them. I know you've hung out with um, Jason Creole, I think, too, and, and, and Naylor. I would connect with them. So Yeah, J- Jason used it MSA for a while. Okay. And then every new customer is a learning experience for us, right? So yeah. Jason used it for a while and he stopped. He probably used it for about 30 days or so. Mm-hmm. And he stopped using it. And then I said, Hey, you know, Jason, why'd you stop using it? And he, he said, Well, I, I'm just not, I'm not bothered by that many inquiries that are outside of my area. And mm-hmm. so, there, you know, there's plenty of Jasons out there that MSA is not a fit for them. They, they don't mind answering the phone calls or responding to the emails, which is totally fine. I mean, J- Jason is extremely successful in the way that he runs his businesses. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to reach out though. Yeah, totally. He, I've been to Jason's business multiple times. He's just a little one guy in a truck, small town boy. But for Eric Hill out there in Fayetteville, he has 10 employees. This is a game changer. So I, I appreciate you. I In the back of my mind, I always kind of thought there's got to be a way to do this. And then I appreciate you reaching out to me because I was like, oh, there's a way to do this. You know, <laughs> uh, so, someone else had took my bright idea and actually executed on it. So. Well, I appreciate how responsive you guys have been and how, how helpful you have been with helping me just, you know, introduce my service area to the lawn care world. A lot of those people earlier in the year that reached out said, I heard you on Paul's show. I heard you on Naylor's show and, you know, want to find out more. And, and that's fantastic. So I appreciate it. Yeah, it's great. Well, Naylor and I, before we ever had a social media you know, following and podcast. Uh, Naylor and I were actually just friends on Snapchat. This was way back in the day. And we'd message each other back and forth talking about route density and one-on-one there, you know, there was no other people listening to us talk about it, but we, we figured out early on that if we can just work in a, a neighborhood two or three, you know, and no more, just, stay within the gates of those neighborhoods or the roads of those neighborhoods, it's going to make us a ton more money than windshield time of, of driving around town. And so we, we figured that out a good eight, nine years ago, but now the vetting process is a lot more smoother with my service area and, and, and being able to do the vetting for us. It makes it even more simple. So it's great that so many guys are listening to our show, Chris, that are in year one, two or three, they're just starting out and they can, they don't have to be on the other side of town like we all were starting out and figuring out the hard way. They can they can start with a boundary and and stick stick to that area. So and and, and I'll share this because I'm getting ready to redo one of my areas. You, you know, Happy Cans has been around for six seven years. I'm, I'm going into year three of ownership of it, and I'm still modifying modifying my service area. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm getting ready to go smaller. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, you're familiar with John's Island. I'm, yeah. I'm getting I'm getting ready to cut that off. It's just it's too much windshield time mm-hmm. and tra- with traffic and everything else. So my, my point of me sharing that is, is whether you're starting out or you've been in business 10 years and you start off with, you know, my service area, you can modify your regions as you see fit. And what an added bonus is that my service area collects all those addresses for you. Mm-hmm. And so you can see them on a map. You can see all your requests in, in territory and out of territory. So let's say you collect all these out of territory, you know, requests this year. Well, at the end of the year, you can take a look and go, you know what? We may need to move over just a little bit because we had 10 inquiries that we didn't service in a, you know, two mile radius. There is definitely some added value that is captured on the back end of MSA for customers so they can, you know, at the end of the year when they need to reevaluate and see what they're going to do, there's some data there to review and help make smart decisions. Cool. Well, I appreciate your time, Chris. My schedule is popping today, man. All I, right. I have a podcast batching day where I just stack them all up and bang them all get out. After I it. roll on. But uh, thanks again for your time. Guys, go to the show notes and get my service area connected to your website and be like Naylor and crush that route density. And follow me on Instagram, my service yeah. area. I- What's Instagram. your what's your handle? My service area. Okay, Marty, put that in the show notes too. <laughs> All right. There Thanks, guys. Go. Thank I, you, Paul. I go, but thank All you right. for your time, Chris. Cool. Thanks. Thank you.